Episode 155, STL Roar. We've got 10 times zero in the house. Well, two of you anyway. So, um, I unplugged him. Is he, how, how does this, do I have to put the hit speaker or not? Don't hit speaker. Say something. Talk. Speak. You talking to me? I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's one I, of the other ones. <laughs> I guess I guess Shasta asked me to um, talk a little bit about the history of the band, how it started. That'd be great. We, uh, um, Scott Jannings and I, were both in a previous band. Um, in a previous band, um, and I moved to Florida, but then. I ended up coming back uh, due to COVID. Remember that? And so we we kind of practiced in private. We practiced in private mm -hmm. uh, at in his basement for quite a while. Uh, I don't know, but then we started adding members, and we added a uh, bass player first. Uh, his name is Mark Nothstein. He's still with us, and we we added a guitar player. And uh, singer, uh, it was a combo. It was Bob Leon. I'm sure you. He, he's a famous face around St. Louis. Yeah. He's in a lot of the clubs. So, um, so Bob went to Florida, and uh, we had to figure out how we were going to uh, recoup from that. We decided we needed to, to get a separate singer and a, and a guitar player, and so. Um, John, who's there in the studio with you, mm -hmm. uh, um, came on board and is uh, tried out. It's fantastic. Then, uh, then uh, Daryl came on board. He's not there, but um, Daryl's a fantastic Ooh, guitar player. Guitar. I'm telling you. <laughs> he, Badass. That's awesome. And he he adds the guts mm -hmm. uh, to our sound. And um, then John had a friend named uh, Shasta, and the, the rest is Shasta's the rest is history. Friend. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that's about it. That's all. That's all I have to add. Um, it's it's been a great ride. It's been about four years, you know, putting this project together, and it's it, with Shasta. She's like the cherry on top of the Sunday. She's uh, really. Um, just a whole lot of singer and a whole lot of stage presence. Yeah. Oh yeah, for being so tiny, yes, definitely. <laughs> She's definitely tiny, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. I mean, and, right. And, and she is a lioness. So I'm a lioness, baby. It is. Um, you know what is it? Kismet, because my my logo's a lion head. I, I just caught that today. It's like wow, that's badass. <laughs> that's true. And the whole band as a whole is so spectacularly talented. Mm -hmm. You know, from Jim, who's on the phone right now, and his keys and all the aesthetics he can do with it and his, you know, AI skills and right. advertisement and it's just all really coming together in a fantastic, awesome way. So, um, yeah. where, um, did you guys just like, I mean, I mean, you just kind of knew other people, I mean, and now you just like got together and you're all friends and it just Pretty worked? Pretty much, kind of like a family, don't you say, John? Yeah. Um, I didn't even start singing until about seven or eight years ago didn't even know how to get in a band always loved music and then I tried out and got in a band but then after a year my job took me to another state mm -hmm. so I tried to find bands there right. and then when I came back here I was looking for bands again and um, went and saw 10 times zero and they seemed like they were... I always wanted to be in a band with a keyboardist because it, you can do other songs that oh, other yeah. bands can't do. Right. So they seemed really good. Didn't think they had a, uh, a definite personality to the band, but they had skill. Right. So then I was like, well, then I'm just going to go over the top and make too much personality because <laughs> I'd rather be... Misunderstood than ignored. <laughs> you can never have too much personality in a band. Are you re are really? I mean, you have to stand out. You have to do something different. You have to Absolutely. make yourself unique as possible. So, you know, you can't think you have too much personality. So, 
Right. What uh, What makes you decide your uh, set list? Mark is the one songs? that comes up with the off the wall <laughs> ideas. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. Ideas, though, I gotta say. <laughs> And when uh, and John actually asked me to come and be a part of this group, he said, "I see a talent in you." And this is coming from a lead singer. He says, "I'll share the stage, just come and and, and sing." And uh, so I was very humbled by that. And they allowed, allowed me to bring some of my stylings, which is very rock, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we got a lot of the, you know, cover styles, but not stuff that's heard by everyone. You know, right. it's still unique, but it's catchy and you're like, oh my god, that song. Yeah. <laughs> Do the B-side. Yeah. The B-side of the songs are, yeah. yeah. A lot of them are, are really good. They underplay. Absolutely. You know, otherwise, you know, you it's the same music, same set list for every bar. Yeah, nobody wants that. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. You always want yeah, to we good. try to keep our list refreshed, and um, it's you get different results in different places, so we're still feeling things out and trying to say, what about this instead of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Putting your spin on it. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's You're right. You're not a cover band. I mean, you're not a tribute band. Anyways. So, yeah, I mean, you can always put your spin on it. Or, you know, make a make a song, an acoustic version. Yes, ma'am. Or, yep. you know, backwards or the other way. Hell yeah. So, definitely, wow. for sure. But, of course, you always get people in the audience say, hey, will you play this song? And nobody's practiced it. So Have they can't. given you the $50 bill written on exactly. the song right. the name on there? We've tried it a couple <laughs> times. One time it worked. <laughs> one time it didn't. So it's always a risk. But yeah. You just you're there to please the people and make them happy. I'm my goal is to help them forget whatever stress they're going through, so right. they can enjoy their weekend and at least for that window of time. And connecting with everyone, everyone should feel relevant. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and definitely. seen and you know and it doesn't sure. take much just to hey acknowledge. I know a musician who says sure I'll play whatever you want and uh, he gets up there and starts to play the song and doesn't play it at all. He plays it to something else. How funny! He does it <laughs> all the time. I love it. Because he can do that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, if he just doesn't know it, he doesn't know it. Now, who wants yeah. to hear a song and it's going to sound like crap? Or, right. you know, nobody wants that. So right. pick something else. But as long Absolutely. as there's no brown eyed girl or Mustang <laughs> Sally. Like, oh. When I was booking bands, I told my bands, if either one of those songs are on your list, I'm, not, I'm dumping you. I am not Let's make sure we take those off first. Take those off. <laughs> I think everybody... Just worn out. Yeah. I mean, of course, when you're in a band, everybody has different views, and mm-hmm. I, but I think we all agree on let's make it fun. Right. Definitely. And when it stops being fun, then it's... Eh. John, you are fun. Do something Thanks. else. <laughs> so you're going to add like fireworks or guns or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm all huh? about it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's some ideas. One of, <laughs> one of, our, hi- one of our highlights I- I- in our show, I, I sent a, a, a pic of a band that's playing uh, someplace we're going to play. Uh-huh. And, and they, they took a, they videoed themselves and they're completely in the dark it's like you you can you can you can see that there's people up there but they're in the dark and one of the things that that we pride ourselves on is our is our lights i mean when when we come in and do a show you see the band it's bright it's brilliant it's the shiniest thing in the room and uh i think that really adds to our presence well also jim you you record every every time we play out and you do it with like three or four different angles and Mm -hmm. by the end of it you've got some amazing footage that you can pass on and share you know like to our websites and stuff and it's always really great quality and i think that's a huge extra niche and just a cool bonus for us the 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 best kept secret and i'm giving it away right now is (laughs) that you you can pull great stills from a 4k video yes you can and you can get just the right shot. You don't have to be there right at the moment. You know, you can just scan through the video, find that ex- exact, you know, scroll back and forth a little bit and find just that point where where John's, you know, singing, got his mouth open, and he's really getting into it. You can catch that and uh, post it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, every time I take a picture, I mean, People get aggravated, my friends, my boyfriend, because I take like a hundred pictures. It's like, I'll pick out the good one. I'll pick out the good one. Because, you (laughs) know, that way it's not, 
You take one shot, and if it's stupid or, you know, somebody's going, you know. And they need to be live shots, yeah. right? <laughs> I hate the live shots. Oh, you do? I don't like the live shots. <laughs> Second like, rewind? I'm like, I, all right, that's a better name. Right there. <laughs> but, yeah, and then you can just, you know, then sometimes when it's really funny, you can just go back and just run your finger along, and it's like, you know, a cartoon thing going on. Yeah. It's a blast. <laughs> so where are you guys, um, are you going to put some of, are you going to play some of her original stuff, or... Oh, that'd be is great. there going to be? We no, are I mean, working on Illuminate band. Illusion. Um, that one's in the works. So hopefully, here in a couple months, that one will be played out because I'm really proud of that one. Um, yeah, we've yeah. been getting gigs almost every weekend now to where we don't know how to allocate our practice time because we got to get ready for the next weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's a good problem to have, right? It's yeah, it is. Have. But you poor thing. Yeah, poor thing. <laughs> oh my God, we got another gig. What am I going to do? <laughs> More money. <laughs> exactly. So well, winter winter will come. It'll slow down a bit. Coming, yeah. We'll get we'll get some time in the in the practice room, and um, get get some new material put together. We we've we've been changing songs almost almost every gig. There's mm -hmm one or two or three new songs that we pop into the set and we get rid of three things that we think uh, we we either tired we're either tired of playing them or they're they're just not maybe going over as as good as we'd want so right. well, that's, you know I, I think every band has that issue because you don't want to do the same set over and over and over you get burned out mm -hmm. yeah, the the thing the thing about this band is though that when, new, when when a new song comes in, when somebody suggests it, we pretty much nail it. By, by the time we, we worked on it all week and come into practice, we pretty much nail it. Mm -hmm. And then, then maybe we'll do it twice in a night, mm -hmm. and then we're ready to play it out. Well, how long have I been with you guys, Jim? And we've brought on like 15 songs for me, like three months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's pretty impressive for us as a whole. And and it shows how well we work together. It's not all just run-of-the-mill Leonard right. Skinner stuff. I mean, we do Carry On Wayward Son, and these guys do the instruments like that was worth paying for, but, and yeah. we right. don't charge admission for any of our gigs. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, re I really enjoyed being able to do uh, Love Shack. That's just such a fun song. The whole it's room a lights song. up when, when you... such a fun song. When you pull that out, and then uh, the Cheryl Crow song, um, "All I Want to Do," mm -hmm. and and Shasta just nails that down, and it it's a tricky little song. You'd it's be surprised. it's just lively. It's fun. It it, it makes the room fun, right. and it kind of opens up the door for that next song, which might be, you know, a lot more serious and heavy and, and everything. There's there's always some relief uh, in the music. Right, but well, yeah, so but do the do two or three in a row when they're totally exhausted. Then they want to sit down. Then you play the heavy one, right? <laughs> yeah. exactly. Well, I really yeah. like the dynamics because yeah. when we trade off vocals back and forth, I mean, when we we also sing background vocals with in, together on one song, but mm -hmm. when we can feature one vocalist and then the other on the next song, I think it adds and it keeps people's attention because it's niche. not just another right. band, right. and like. I'm pretty good at the majority of the songs that I do if I've known them a while and mm -hmm. I just feel emotionally comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. But when I hear her sing, it's like, it seems like the atmosphere elevates. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we need to add more of her and less of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 goes both, it goes both ways. I, hear pe I don't like girl singers, I don't like guy singers. But then when they shut their eyes, it's like, or just turn around, don't even look, and guess what? You're not even going to care who's singing as long as it sounds good. Right. You know, but Emotion there are some that just, you know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. So it's just, you just do what you want to do. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to please everybody. That's you're right. not chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, there's there's not many... And not many bands. There are some, and they're and they're, but they're they're at, at a much higher level than than where we're at. But not many cover bands at our level that have two lead singers and keys, mm -hmm. and and you put all it together and a killer guitar player. You're right, Jimbo. You put all that together, yeah. and um, and one of the most important things is 
you, this isn't to say we're better than everyone else because no. my point is we don't have egos and I can't brag about us and having no egos or else it defeats the purpose. <laughs> egos. There's a healthy ego. Right. <laughs> no, because you are actually, your band is giving everybody everything. So yeah. it's, oh, you know, if they had keys. Oh, you know, if they had this. or not. You've got all the bases covered. Yeah. So One of my favorite things to do when we have time is during the breaks just get to know the people Mm -hmm. and then they realize oh you're just like me we we can talk and it's just to me a band isn't complete if it's just singing songs there needs to be some kind of interaction and of course the best interaction is when the crowd is into your music we feed off that inspiration oh yeah definitely because you need your followers I mean you get, you get, you know, they'll tell two people, and they'll tell two people, yeah. and they'll tell two people. So, yeah. you know, you need your instant crowd. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes when you go to a gig and there's two people there, you still have to play like there's mm-hmm. two million people there. Absolutely. So, but if you've got yeah. your 25 best, you know, followers, guess what? It's okay. You know, because they're going to totally appreciate it more than... And I appreciate you for that. Like, you've always made me feel relevant, and like... Uh, I wouldn't say sought me out, but like if you were in the atmosphere, you would come and you would approach me, and that, that's always meant a lot to me, just so you know. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah no, it's, that's easy. Talking yeah. to people is easy. <laughs> Getting up on stage, though, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got its challenges, right? Yeah, yeah, it does sometimes, because, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's still, it's humbling, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it can be scary when you get up there. It doesn't matter if you're up there a million times. Well, I'm 44, and it took me 40 years to to walk with my head up and believe in myself and now it's like I'm not turning back you know because there's too many people out there that need freedom through your freedom if that makes sense mm-hmm. you know and that's my approach and my mentality on things anymore and so that's good can you cuss on here <laughs> say you say you fuck want. fear <laughs> say whatever you right, want well, yeah there's no religion no politics yeah, <laughs> no <problem. laughs> yeah I know there's, there's no censorship just as too easy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah. You just the more people you talk to, and you, you know, you just um, give them. Um, you make them feel just as important as they make you. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done a lot of jam sessions, and there are people who, there's musicians, there's some really good people that don't want to play in a band. They just want to go to a jam session, do their two or three songs, mm-hmm. and go home. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that's that's all they need to do, but you know, they're that's their fame, and they they like doing that, and they're great. Get the creative shit yeah, out, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so I get that. Um, and then, um, but they still appreciate music and go out and you know see other bands and all that kind of good thing. So you know, it just go. It's on both sides. But then again, they they've also there's a few of them. I know. I'm thinking of one in particular. This guy has got a relative who's been in a bunch of bands and so he hears all the bad mm-hmm. because the guy is just done with everything but he's not ready to give it up because he's really not done with it he just right. likes to it's cry it's in your blood he just likes to cry <laughs> I'm like sit down and shut up just play and be quiet you know <laughs> Jesus if it was that bad you wouldn't keep doing it but yeah. so you know it is what it is but um, yeah so you need to get more original music out there mm-hmm. And then you need to put it on vinyl. Put on Not vinyl. 45, vinyl. All right. Make yourself an album. Yeah. You know, you're only 44, you got plenty of time. Don't Here's you have that. a birthday coming up? I do. <laughs> You're going to be, Thank what, 45? 45. God, <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be 45. Oh, Jesus well, you only look 45 of that. I'll keep drinking. I get cuter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, the oldest one in the room. All right. <laughs> I am. Well, bring that shit up because you look great. <laughs> Do you, are you are you able to play any of the music from those? Uh, I've got to download YouTube it onto, links. Yeah, I've got to download it onto. Um, how can I do this? How do I do this? I've got to download it as an MP3. But how can I put it on here so On my phone. I'll do it when we put, I'll put some more songs on and then I'll do it while those other songs are playing. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Unless you've got it on a drive, ready to go. Stick it in there. I have my original on Google Drive, but not. No, no, no. I mean, as far as we can just plug oh. it in. No, no. 
but I know better for next time. No, next time you're gonna have a CD. So. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so where do you see where do you see this band going? I mean, you guys are doing all kinds of different music, getting to know each other, and playing this that. You know, what's your strength? What's your strength? Jim, you want to field that one? What is your strength in this band? First, besides the well, our, long, long, we're, we're hoping longevity is our is one of our great <laughs> yeah. strengths. Um, but the other thing is, I think the my go my my parents were both musicians, awesome. and and I just I would like to have a band whose name is known in the St. Louis area. In, in other words, w whenever you say to somebody ten times zero, they go, "Oh yeah, I, I've I've heard of that band." Um, th there there. Are, obviously a few bands like that around St. Louis already that, that, that have a name, everyone's heard of them, everyone's, you know, s seen them, and we're on, on the cusp of nailing that down, I'd say in a year and a half, we, we will um, be pretty close to a household name, because we will have been around quite a bit. Well, you're in a good position now because some of the bands that have been around forever and a day that still have their, you know, their regulars and all that kind of thing, but people sure. still want to go out and see other bands. And they'll take the time to go see not just their favorite band, but hey, I want to check these people out, I want to check these people out. So there's probably about 10 bands right now, I'm thinking off the top of my head, that are all, you guys are all in the same group. And people are, I mean, you guys are getting more gigs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard it. There's a lot more um, solo and duo stuff going on. Yep. Spinoffs from these bands. That's yeah. true. Because yeah. they're covering, you know, like the Acoustic Nights yep. or whatever bar it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that gets your foot in the door a little bit more. Yeah. More fan base or whatever. So, but yeah, it's it's like a new breed of, you know, bands coming in, music, musicians. Or old musicians switching up and getting another band, you know. Yep. Like Real Rock Revival is, you know, main people are from Bitter Pill. That's and Gypsy yeah. Soul. That's actually my cousin. Anastasia. <laughs> yeah. Oh my first yeah. Cousin. We, we just saw her Saturday night. Yeah. God. She's pregnant. She's gonna. Oh, yes. So happy. <laughs> Ten years waiting. <laughs> I know. Bless yeah. her heart. Yeah. She's happy. She yeah. is happy. So yeah, I was I was glad to see that. But no, yeah, they sound good. But like, you amazing. know, she's got an amazing voice. Oh yeah. So I, w I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, I don't know if there are any bar owners listening, but. You know, it, it the borrowers always um, are obviously interested in bringing in clientele and, and having the band, um, you know, bring people right. in or bring their crowd because you know that's that's kind of one of the goals, right? To make more business. Right. So, what what I'd li like to say is, it works best when the bars embrace the band's social media when there's when there's a two-way street when in other words if if i'm posting this band gig and putting reels out and and putting a lot of effort into really promoting it it doesn't go anywhere unless the bar also picks that up and starts posting that on their site the 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 um Bar owners, I believe, they well, they do this every every week, right? They, so so they get kind of burnt out. But but the people that are coming to your bar don't need to don't need to experience that burnout. Yeah. They need so every every night every that we play, we want it to be an event. Let's 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 work on an event together. Let's make this special. We had uh, at Rebar, we had what we called Love Shack Night. And so we worked with the bar. They had um, uh, Love Shack shots up on the up on the board and they sold them for, you know, discount prices. And so it, it was Love Shack Night. We gave out Hawaiian lays. Everybody came in, got got a lay to put on, and we just had made it a fun night. And, and so that's really what we'd also like to bring to the bars is this idea of whenever we play, it's an it's an event. Let's partner together to um, make it special, and, and you do that by p 
picking up these these real we're taking the time to make the reels pick that reel up and put it on your site um and and advertise you know oh yeah when, when i was booking uh 100 years ago it, it was always the, the the bars that i like to book um or the events i like to book are when i talk to a manager not the first words out of his or her mouth how many people can they bring you know what? I'm like, yeah. I know. Oh, that oh, used to drive me insane. I, I'm like, let go because of that. Don't. Yes. You can't start a conversation off Thank how many you. people they bring. Right. Because it, you know what? Uh, you don't. He didn't. That person didn't care if they were any good or not. Mm-hmm. And it was yep. so frustrating. I said, Well, Couldn't this is the way I look at it. Here's what the band. This is what it's going to cost. These guys are going to pr- promote. You promote. It, it. It is like you said. It has to be a two way street. Absolutely. Got to go all the way around. So. And there was a couple times I, I mean, to sell a band, I said, if they suck, you don't have to pay them. I will pay them. Nice. Guess what? I had, didn't have to pay any bands. Nice. Because I said, you better bring your <laughs> moms, your grandmas, your kids, your dogs. I don't care. Drag them all in here because I'm not paying you guys. No, I'm kidding. But, I mean, it was like, it was an easy sell, but there was a few. Um, we had one guy who blew in from Texas, decided he wanted to buy a bar, has no experience booking bands, no experience. nothing at all, not any of this stuff. First words out of his mouth, how much, how much? And somebody had gotten to him first and said, oh, you need to book the really expensive bands because they're going to bring everybody. That's not true. The Bad business. The higher Bad paying bands don't always bring it. Or their people are not going to be there. Or there's a not every band is going to fit every bar. Is that a common expectation? Because that's and been on my mind. That, are, you, yeah. are you really supposed to bring people to their bar during? I mean, we're bringing the entertainment. You would think they wouldn't have to. Well, they, they the think that yeah. You know, when the, some of the bar owners think that you know you're responsible for bringing everybody yeah. into the bar. Well, if that were the case, and I had a built-in crowd, well, guess <laughs> right. what? I wouldn't need you. you. Know, I wouldn't. For yeah, one. exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just a few like that. But, yeah. but some of the bar owners that I know are just like, oh, I love those guys. And there was, and it's kind of a sad story. This really, really um, um, famous, I say famous, um, well-liked band. No matter where they went, it was standing alone. Yeah. This one bar. This one silly bar. And it was a nice bar. It wasn't bad. He loved this band. I mean, he booked them every month, but nobody went to see them. Mm. And he lost so money you know. on... I mean, he said he lost money, but he didn't really lose money. They always say they lose money. Part of the bar, yeah. <laughs> you know. And not I was like, well, not every <clears throat> bar, and not every band, and every bar is going to match. That's right. I don't know if it's a location or what, but yeah, they're a <clears throat> And they kill everywhere they go. Yeah. But this particular bar, they just did not. You know, but then I booked a band and there, and I, I hate to admit this, they're mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. And that's it. You brought up a good point, is that to to develop a crowd, it's it's not a one-night stand. No. It's like, no, we're going to have these guys, mm-hmm. and, and others of the bar owners would, would s- keep their rotation a little shorter so that, yes, we're, we're back every month, People can plan on that, right? People can put that on their calendars. They go, "Oh, I really like that band. Are they gonna? They're gonna be here next month? Okay, well, we'll put that on our calendar, and we'll put that on our calendar." But, but this three-month rotation doesn't allow anybody to build any, um, build uh, to build up a crowd or build up a a following. And, and I think the bars are just as responsible for helping to build the following mm-hmm. uh, of the people they, they hire. They, we, we should have a partnership together. We're going to give our best, our best 200%, mm-hmm. and they're going to give their best 200% and, uh, and in promoting these, uh, these events, not just, hey, we got a band tonight, whoop. Right. Mm-hmm. And some are really you know, great but, at it. I guess. Oh yeah, but but it's also it's also you know, another catch twenty two in this town. There's so many talented musicians. Everybody's mm-hmm. playing every weekend, yeah. and there's a lot of musicians who want to go yeah. out and see their friends play, but they're flipping exhausted. And when yeah. they do get a night off, they're staying home. Yeah, I'm taking my shoes off. I'm putting this guitar away. I'm going to sit on the couch right. and and bitch because I am tired. I We're hoping to out. capture some people. And that's even another if, problem. You even know? if people only come yeah. out for an hour. Mm-hmm. You know that's good. Right. I, that's 
I've seen people stay till the very end of our oh, four-hour gig, sure. and I'm like, wow, you guys, thank you. Yeah, oh, that's great. But, that's uh, great. yeah, everybody's got a busy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. We're there. We're all there to have fun. So right. okay. um, however we can provide that and let people know mm-hmm. that that's the goal, I mean, that's, that's what that, I want to do. And how we can make it special, too. Yeah. Right. Just, just making it, making de- uh, the the crowd feel special, and we feel special, and and you know, you shout out to the to the bartenders and the and the uh, yeah. and the uh, and the owner, owner, and, and, and we're you know we're tearing down our equipment at sometimes one thirty in the morning, and but we're saying to ourselves that was worth it because we made people forget about their troubles and they, right. they jammed or somebody came up and said man I haven't heard that song in two decades and you guys brought right. back an experience in my mind that I had right. with an old girlfriend or something like that and it's just like thanks and so then it's, you just go away feeling satisfied even though you're exhausted you're like this is worth it right oh yeah definitely I mean that's why a lot of there's so many uh, loyal fans to cover bands because it's all tied to a personal memory or something yeah. that went on in their life, and they like to relive all that whole thing. Yeah. But you know, and and I and I do like that. But the original music, you gotta have originals yes, to make ma'am. covers. We are working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's the same songs, and not yeah. everything's getting out there. You know, but it, it's a vicious and it's cycle. another niche, right? Yes. Everybody wants to hear good is. original music. Definitely. So. Yeah. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's a that goes with. Like if you, uh, one night I went out to see as many bands as I could because mm-hmm. I put my name out there all the time, and my record is seven venues, seven flipping venues in one night. In right. one night. Wow. And I started. You're at, more addicted than us. I was retarded. <laughs> it was silly. I mean, it was a blast, but I couldn't stay long enough. Yeah. We ain't got one drink, maybe. <laughs> uh, you know, a few yeah. songs, and I hauled ass because I wanted to see. I think I had seven bands booked that night, and I wanted to see all of them. Yeah. So, and that's important, too. If you've got, <laughs> you know, whoever's booking you, um, they should go out and check on, see what's going on, just For because sure. they're representing you or whatever, you know, but I don't know what your situation is, but still, it's, um, and I would see some other musicians who, you know, wanted to go out and check out this person or that person or whatever, and it, it, it goes across the board as far as the camaraderie with other musicians. Now, you know as well as I do, not everybody gets along with everybody. I always said I would start a band called Egos and Attitudes because I got some stories. <laughs> I'll never tell really? them, but yeah. No. I mean, it's like, you know, sometimes it's just like that. But, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're um, you know, civil to each other That's and right. you just do your Goes thing. Ways. But no matter what, I, I've seen this town where musicians will come together and Egos and Attitudes aside and... Mm-hmm you know, join forces. Because what do you have to have an ego or attitude about? It's like, it's, in my opinion, it's not a competition. It's mm-hmm. everybody collaborating on making St. Louis awesome and the talent we have to offer. There's, I've, not, know? I've been all over the United States. Negativity. I don't see any other towns or cities that have what we have. I mean, we have so many musicians. And and the venues are full every weekend. You know, yeah. 99% of them. Yeah. I mean, Chicago isn't like that. They have, like, two or three main bars. Is that it? We've got a That's zillion. Sad. You know, every corner's yeah. got something. Yeah. Or somebody's backyard or yeah. a street corner. Or a winery, right? Or a winery. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, but, um, you know, the egos and energy thing, 99% of that you know it's all them. Yeah. It's all them. Mm-hmm. They got something going on. You can't take it personal. You really can't. No, you just listen to them. Are you done now? <laughs> yeah. Are you done screaming me? It's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. Um, but yeah, my favorites are the kids coming up. You know, the legacies. Absolutely. That have, um, future. Yeah. So Tim, you're a legacy. Are you guys a legacy? You're a legacy. Mm-hmm. You a, are you a legacy? Did uh, your parents play? No. But you grew up with music. I grew up, I think I got a radio when I was like seven years old, and that was my girlfriend all yeah. through high school. <laughs> right, right, right. That many years, I just yeah. played every station and tried to mimic every right. every different style. Mm-hmm. And so that's, I was like, maybe one day I'll be a singer somewhere, I don't know how, and then <laughs> it just took years. 
So, yeah. I mean, it's just, there's something about music that puts your emotional life in another place. Mm-hmm. That, and I think it's kind of like therapy. Yeah. I mean, it can make you air out your frustrations. It mm-hmm. can elevate your mood. You if you go the wrong road, you can get down and stay in that area. But right. overall, it's something that can provide relief and joy in people's life. It has for me, and that's why I'm just doing nothing but spreading the gospel of music. Mm-hmm. Well, it's 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 um, it's never ending, and it transcends all everything. And you never told to no get out there and do it. There's no bullshit. Right? It's music. Absolutely. Yes. So yeah. I mean, you, Johnny. John, you talked about listening to the radio. I did the same thing, and you'd be this will this will tell you how old I am. I'm older. K K K X O K. K X O K. Yes. A. M. Six thirty a.m. <laughs> yes. am- Blab it to the rabbit. Yeah, yep. The rabbit is still around, believe it or not. Is he really? Mm-hmm. And and Bruno, remember Bruno? Yes, I remember Bruno. Jake Gronin, yeah. So anyway, yeah, that that dazes me. But yeah, I listen to uh, what Johnny Angel, mm-hmm. how I love you. <laughs> yeah, some of the, some of those old tu- tu- tunes. But yeah, I grew up on music as well. Listen to the ra- listening to the radio. I came in in, f- in fourth grade. I walked into to, to my my first day of school, and all the girls were talking about the Beatles. And and they were so excited about it that I decided that's what I wanted to be was a musician. (laughs) 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 That's funny. Well, my dad was a luthier. He worked at GM, but he um, he was listening to Casey when it first hit the airwaves in nineteen sixty-seven. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so I listened to it, even though I was a kid. But I mean, but I got turned on to all kinds of music. Like I still have two albums. It was Herb Albert and Tijuana Brass, mm-hmm. Whipped Cream. Oh yeah, the lady. They, mm-hmm. She was just on Facebook. She's like sixty four. She wore a whipped cream dress. She's oh, on the front of this awesome. album, and yeah, it was so badass. Hmm. But yeah. Yeah, my dad liked everything. And um, right next door to us, I grew up in Wentzville. Um, Chuck Berry's taxidermist lived next door to us, and he told him about my dad, and so my dad made a guitar for Chuck Berry. And Chuck and Ingrid used to come over. She was like one of my first little girlfriends to play with because our neighborhood, there was, you know, I rode my bikes with all the boys, but yeah, five. I think Ingrid and I have been friends since we were five. But yeah, he he made a guitar for Chuck Berry. They used to jam out in the basement. So your dad made made music? Made guitars, yeah. He made all of us one. I'm the oldest of six. He made all of us guitars. But I didn't know who Chuck Berry was. It was just somebody else my dad made a guitar for. And then I saw him on the Ed Sullivan Show. Oh, there's that guy. My dad was there. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No big deal. <laughs> but, yeah, so I've listened to, I grew up with all kinds of different music. Uh, and he would he would hear something like Steppenwolf or, oh, listen to this. Okay, there's this guitar player and there's that drummer and then there's this. And this. He'd pick out all the instruments and... Yeah, he was he was always listening to something different, always. So, you need that variety. I yeah, know. music does something that just charges up your energy. I'm it's hard to believe, but I'm more of an introvert in everyday life. And when I get up it's on stage, I'm like that. something <laughs> just flips a switch, and I just gotta <laughs> do something else. And it, I think Daryl, our guitarist, is similarly that way. He just. I mean, we've thrown so many songs at him, and he just picks it up almost the same day, mm-hmm. and says, "If you know, if there's one glitch in there, I'll I'll work on it. And I'll get ready, then it'll be done the next week." And I'm like, "Man, right? We found some gold in that." It oh, seems like yeah. everybody that we've we've tried to get involved in this band has worked out just right. I mean, everybody, of course, has differences, mm-hmm. but we're mature enough to know. You know, let that go so for the greater good of the whole band. Right, right. So everybody agrees eventually. Absolutely. Or whatever, yeah. So, so it's a, it's the a, the the big test of a of a band is really yeah. the breakdown at, at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the truth. That, you know, is the singer whether, sitting in the chair or not? She wishes. <laughs> <laughs> whether you know whether, whether the the job went well or not well, how do you all work together to mm-hmm. to 
pack that stuff in. We have stuff. We we have so many things that need to be packed up and put away. It's now we're and um, we've been we've been doing that in a half hour. I'm, I've, I've been in some bands. It takes an hour and a half to break down and get get it all put away. But uh, this band wor- works together like clockwork. That's awesome. Yeah, well, in that process, now Jim is handling three things. He plays keyboards, guitars, and does the sound. Uh-huh. And then when something's not exactly right, we're all of us band members are in a huddle like, should we tell Jim something, <laughs> or is that going to interrupt his flow of, of focus? And we're, we just don't really know what to do. But eventually he gets it all worked out. And so I don't know how how much uh, I can I can't overstate how valuable he's been. I mean everybody is. Scott's our drummer. He's really good at customer uh, interaction with the managers of the bar. Yeah, I don't awesome know how to say yeah. everything I need to say. He <laughs> yeah. seems to just flow yeah, like cool. he's a manager or something. Yeah. Right. So that's pretty good. Um, well, do you guys use in ears? I've been trying to, sometimes it interferes with our other system shit, so we're trying to work that out, right. but ideally, I, I would like to master the in-ear, right. just so I can hear everything. And you have you have your own monitors, so is it, are you talking about, you know, when, I don't know what to say, well, just say it. Yeah. I, don't, I need more of this, and yeah. less of that, and more of this, and I, I've used louder. I've used inner ear and ears, and it usually bothers me. Mm-hmm. Um, I prefer the just the regular monitors, right. but we've been playing to where I don't even use any mm-hmm. because I just got an internal tempo in my mind. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I just if miss all the harmonies and stuff that I wish I could really hear live, so I could add to mm-hmm. that more precisely. But like I said, we're we're working on the in ear stuff, and I think that'll yeah, really go far for it's 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 still a, there's there's basically I had I had somebody from the audience come back behind the speakers, and he goes. It's so quiet back here. He said, "Out there, it's, you know, out there, it's 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 not blasting. We we never blast a bar, but right. we 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 find the right volume for the room. But behind those speakers, we've got di- we've got digital drums in place. Both uh, guitarists, me, myself, and Daryl, mm-hmm. are going through the board. Um, every everything's going through the board. The only really live instrument." going through an amp is the bass mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh so it's it's it, it, you can hear yourself think in other words right. the, the band isn't struggling to communicate right. over some big loud stack of amplifiers we mm-hmm. we can uh, communicate very well up on stage and it seems yeah. to benefit us it makes us tighter yeah mark's <laughs> good at telling people you know what he thinks needs to be adjusted he's I th- I don't know. He, he's got this job where he operates a crane during the day, so he's he's been up since four in the morning, and then right. he comes and does a gig anyway. Or sometimes right. he even calls off work mm-hmm. to be in our. You know, we're right. not. He he would have made more money in his job, and he's so he's but he's just happier dedicated. playing. Artist. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's an artist for yeah. sure. But you know, you were talking about being shy. So um, you've seen El Monstero, right? Mm. Have you guys seen it? I have no I've I've seen videos of it and my brother says you got to see this and every time I try to go it's sold out. Oh. <laughs> well, um so Mark Quinn who is the main guy, mm-hmm. he's the quietest person you'll ever meet. He works at Killer Vintage um selling guitars or anything you need and he's so quiet, but you put him on stage, he's insane. He's That's also awesome. the front man for Joe Dirt. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he doesn't even have a Facebook page. That's I mean that's just how shy he is. But yeah, when you when you see him, if you ever like if he's um, if they're ever playing, go go talk to him or go see when Joe Dirt's playing because they're easier to see. Yeah, uh, have to, I mean that whole band's in El Monstero, but I mean you can just see. I mean he's just so. What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> but yeah, he's super cool. He's he's very down to earth. But yeah, he's super shy. But yeah, El Monstero. I mean, it's a huge production. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, check it out. It is a blast. So, but there's a lot of musicians like that who are just you know. I feel like it's pretty common. It's pretty normal, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, we all deal with our shit, and then you know, when you have a passion for something and a talent for it, you know, it just comes out when you want to share that. And right. Yeah. 
Like well, I said, you throw fucking fear to the wind. And <laughs> do it. Well, yeah, I mean, because the audience is not only expecting a show, they want to be transformed. They yeah. want you to entertain them because they're going to turn around and entertain you. Yeah. And you're going to feed off each other's energy. That's the hope that I have. I worry sometimes that they're just there to socialize and we're just background music. So that's why... Sometimes it's like that. That's how it is. In order to avoid that, I dress up in all kinds of weird clothes. I use props. I jump around like Mick Jagger because (laughs) I want their attention so so that we're not tuned out. Right. And I hope that provides an, an extra level of entertainment. Although I'm probably getting some question marks from the fellow <laughs> band members, but I'll try to work through it. No, it, it, sometimes it just works out like that because you know it, there are. Um, Rick has a band; it's a four-piece acoustic, and sometimes it ends up because everybody's yapping, even though they have a great following, and we all know each other as family friends. Yap, yap. I'm like, shut up! I gotta hear the song. Don't talk to me right now, or mm-hmm. something. You know, and sometimes people. That's just how they're still listening to it, but, mm-hmm. you know, so they don't right. realize it. You know, it's, it's not so bad. So don't take it personal. They're there to socialize, ultimately, you know. and Right. But they want to so. be in a place. But the energy, that's what, what comes yeah, off. Yeah, I agree. We've got some people hollering here. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Trip 7 says, love all you guys. Could not ask for better human beings to be in a band with. Trip seven. Who's trip seven? Who's trip seven? <laughs> Tell him to state his name. It might know. be Mark. <laughs> is that <laughs> is that is that Mark's uh, code name on Facebook? <laughs> but Bud, you know Bud. Bud yeah. Bud, yeah. He says, "Hey guys." Hey. hey trip hey. says, "Music makes life better." That's and right. Bud says, "Can't hear you as well as the rest of the cat." I don't know what that means. What do you mean you can't hear me? I'm pretty loud. <laughs> Richard, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> That's Rick Chambers. He's my guy. Here we go. That's for you, baby. <laughs> He's like, not getting on camera. Yeah. yeah. I'm not getting on camera. He's a great guitar player. Awesome. His band is Escape. They're playing on October 5th. The at... Tribute for Journey? No. No. Not the Tribute for Journey. Who's the Tribute for Journey? Who's that? I, I know an Escape band. I thought do it was. Know, a... get the, do you know Escape? Do you know? I think I heard that before. Do you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His uh, band was Second Wind. He was in Second Wind for a long time. Do you remember them? You don't. She just got out of high school, for <laughs> crap's sake. <laughs> she didn't know what a 45 was. It's a I gun, know. right? <laughs> Silly girl. <laughs> um, no, it's... Um, uh, um, so you're at... Um, what is it? Where are you ready again on October 5th? I forgot. Where are we at? Yeah. Is that Armored Jeans? Armor Jeans. Armor Jeans and Florissant. Yes. So their drummer is on a cajon, but he's got um, he's got um, he's got all the toys to go with it. So everything, you know. So chimes and mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty good. And it, the sound is just it's just right. They don't need a big band. They don't need a big drum set because he plays guitar. Rob Sherman's on bass, and then um, Camille is their singer. She, she does a lot of weddings, so she's got a great voice. Um, and they have a whole mix-up of different songs, but it works, yeah. you know. So it's got a little bit for everybody. I think that that's what makes it work, mm-hmm. that variety. It is, so they're good. When do you guys play next? This weekend, where are you at? We play Saturday. At? At the quarry. In, it's What's the wine, uh, wine, wine garden in New Melly. That's a cool From venue. 7 to 10. Have you been there? No, I've seen some recent videos. It's a cool venue. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, they're really good to their bands. Awesome. So Hopefully we get to play outside as well, which I really dig. Mm -hmm. See, that's when you bring the fireworks and the guns, see? Come on, John. 45. That's what 45 means, right? (laughs) (laughs) Bring that (laughs) six-sheeter. Yeah, it's going to be a good time, so call your friends and have them come on out. And if you don't have any friends, call your enemies and bring them. (laughs) That's right. It looks like, it looks like a very romantic uh, setup out there, under the stars, and uh, th- they have umbrellas and separate tables, and looks very nice. It is nice. Um, it, it's uh, the food is good, and um, yeah, it's they have a, they always have a huge crowd because people just want to go chill sometimes. Nice, good food, huh? Oh yeah, food's always good. a bonus. Yes, the food is good. It is so. But yeah, it's it's a fun place, and like I said, I mean, I haven't heard any complaints. They they treat their bands right. You know. 
Thank you. You need to do that. Never piss a band off. I'm telling you, that goes a long way. It goes. Petty, oh, dumb shit. oh I said, said do not piss <laughs> off a band. You piss a band off, that's it. You mm-hmm. just sign a death warrant because they talk. They talk. <laughs> <laughs> it gets out they there. They know people. I'm sure you've seen some of the posts. There's been a few disgruntled musicians who have, you yeah, know, not some said some not very kind yeah. things about some some venues over the years. But, you know, it's always going to happen like that sometimes. You know? So this Saturday is the quarry. Mm-hmm. The following Friday is Parrot's Bar and Grill in uh, St. Peter's. Have you guys played there yet? Oh, you've played there yet. you played there. No. Haven't you? No. No? no. I've st- stood this in as a guest singer there once. So I think my past yeah, this will be the first oh, time Ten birthday. Times Zero has oh. played there, uh, but uh, I think all the members have, have played there once or in a different band. Yeah, exactly. Or jam night. You're a jam night. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They've had many owners. You know, Margie's brother used to own that place. Margie Pennington. Yeah, I love her so much. She's so genuine. I know we saw her too. She's such a cutie. She's fun. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. She's great. She is great for sure. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I think that's all we got on. The, yeah, I don't know who Trip Seven is, but um, let's put on a couple more songs. Um, so we heard from Torchlight Parade and Judge with him, and then Stir. That's Kevin Gagnapain too, and um, Brad, and what's what's the other guy's name? The other two guys in the band. But, um, yeah, Stir, um, one of the guys lives in California, and um, they they were on their way. They, got, they had quite a few hits out there for a little bit in the 90s. But, um, yeah, they're great. So, um, any original band you could think of here that you want to hear from? Um, I, I'm not too familiar with the originals. I won't lie to you. John Boy? Dealer's Choice. No, deal yeah. choice I got it. Take it away. I got it. I got it. Brother so King. I got an original if you want to play that shit. It's pretty <laughs> I don't know if I have that. Let me see if I do. Tim, any original <laughs> any original bands, uh, local bands you want to hear a song from? Is he still there? No. Yeah. No, I can't think of anything. All right. Let's do a little... So we we can't we can't play any of our any of our things. No, when I'm going to put a played. song on, I'm going to and I'm going to transfer it over there, so it'll be it'll be in the uh, mix. Cool. So I was going to take a real quick break for a second. Let's do. Uh, um, I know you guys know who um, Steve Ewing is, right? Uh, ish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out from under that rock I've been under. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me see if I can find you one of his songs. Um, let's see. Oh, so while I'm looking for music, so how'd you just. Des- his band was the urge. How did you decide on the name of your band? Uh, it, it, it came to me in a vision. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is all you, you weren't do. smoking peyote or anything, were you? I think he might have uh, been eating mushrooms. What were you doing? It, <laughs> it, it, mostly, it's a it's a name. You you know that so the the name Sony. Yes. It it means nothing in any language. It's just letters put together. Really? And so so it's a very neutral. It's not. In other words, it's not offensive. And that's that's kind of what ten times zero is. It's 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 not offensive. It's not um, crude. It's not anything. It's just kind of it, it's a blank palette. And at the time, we didn't know which way, which direction the band was going to go, or what music we would end up bringing into it. Right. Um, but it, it's the the name has served us well. John came up with the phrase. Uh, Ten times the fun with uh, zero regrets, and I, I think that tags us pretty good. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break. Um, this is what, episode one fifty five. Ten times zero in the house. Um, Tim, you gonna stick around? Or are you gonna call back? It's probably gonna be about fifteen oh. minutes or so. Yeah, you I can just, call back. If that oh, you can works. just—I mean, you just stay on the phone. It'll be all right. You can do that okay. too. All right. All right. Okay. Let's go party. Up the window cause you're so fucking thirsty But 
stop over the curb to the neon light. It's not fast food and it ain't no pit stop. It's the thirst block! Yeah! We're going to the liquor store! We're going to the liquor store! We're going to the liquor store! To the urge on cassette, they want us to play, but we said not yet. Never start singing when a mouth is dry. Never stop playing till we're thick with fine. Never let up till the keg is dry. When I'm talking, you was saying goodbye. The dudes got mad and the girls start crying. The body's dying! Yeah! We're going to the liquor store! Oh! We're going to the liquor store! his money back but he was hurt from a window on the van are you getting smoke in a pile of empty cans when your party's over that's when hours begin still are your girlies that make i get away yeah first things first babe open your purse you get no stick to your points the third go inside and get my pickle go inside and get my pickle
Thank you, thank you. So it, it, it sucks because they're just miserable and just are not happy unless everybody else is miserable. You it's know? just a narcissistic world, sadly, is what I've come to well, Unfortunately. And I've come to stop it <laughs> through right. love. As exactly. cheesy as that sounds, I've come to stop that through love and just be a mom and right. Very cool. I'm fucking genuine. So. so now you sing that song like that, okay? <laughs> no, that was great. That was awesome. So I gotta give a little props here. Um, so oh, let's see. Um, episode one fifty five, ten times zero in the house. Oh God, I'm losing my voice. Yes. Soldier by Blood, Louis Wood Productions, Louis Wood Studio, Louis Wood Radio, and Tweezy, the man behind me who makes everybody look good. Woo, 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 Tweezy. <laughs> um, so, um, big shout out to Charlotte Judy, my sister, partner in crime. Oh, yeah. Saturday night, Destroy the Future's playing there. If you, I know you're playing, but are you not playing? You're playing this weekend. You're at the winery. Yes. Awesome. So, um, yeah, destroy the future. They've been around. Sister, I guess. Well, it's like um, not by blood, so but close so enough, enough, right? Yeah. You know, cool. the people who are not your family usually end up being the closest, right? Because you can pick them. <laughs> and um, I gotta give props to uh, Vance Towns. His band is Bad Tattoo. On Facebook, it's VBT Towns, and his wife Bunny. He does a show on Thursday night. It is, I gotta get this right because I always mess it up. The All Around Sound Show, um, and he does it through Todd Colors, KGF Rocks, and he plays all original music and he talks about um, who's playing where. And then Bunny is his wife. Bridget is her real name, but um, so I gotta give props to Vance because he always gives us props. So yeah, he's awesome. And of course, uh, Real Rock Turb Rock. You guys know Tom? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, who doesn't, right? I knew him yeah. from the Dave Glover show. Oh, wow. Yes. Good old Dave Glover. He's actually a really good music. He's another one that had really bad stage fright. Because the Dave Glover band, and um, so the, the guys he was in the band with had to teach him how to stand up in front of no, He's in front of a microphone all day long running his mouth. But when he gets up to sing or play, and he's really good. But yeah, it was like, that <gasps> was pretty funny. And of course, um, one more. Wait, I got. I think I got one more. Oh, la 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 la. I don't know what you're to do. I think that was it. Yeah. And um, to my friends at St. Charles Music House, Friday night Midwest Avenue is playing, and Saturday Sunset Strip is playing. So two killer bands. Have you seen Sunset Strip? It's uh, Tony I've and Gracia really Jr. Yeah. yeah. His um, more alternative okay. um, music, but okay. he brings it. He's got that voice and that presence, mm -hmm. and he's just, oh, I mean, he's oh, just, yeah. yeah, he's cool. He's super mm -hmm. cool. And his father, Tony Sr., I mean, they're both great musicians. They both have their own different styles, though. What's so great about it, but they're yeah. so passionate and yeah. just, you know, so, yeah. Got to give them a shout out. And, um,. I do want to do this. I just found out today I lost one of my really good friends. Whew. Mary at Meesey, um, Mike's wife. Mike played for Head East, and everybody knows. So I want to raise a glass to Mary at. Hmm. That one hurt. Wow, she's too young, 58 years old. Heart, heart surgery complications, that's all I know. So, anyway, but. So. Call your friends, your family, and t reach out and touch everybody, you know, 
talk to them, you know, because you just never know. Mm. But yeah, yeah. right. Anyway. We'll have to mention that when we do never been any reason. Just as a tribute. Yeah. That is a good one. Well, you know, um, if you ever go to El Monstero, they put, um, they have a, um, um, there's a song that they do. Um, wish you were here. I keep saying miss you were gone. Mm -hmm. I wish you were here. And they put on the screen videos, they put pictures of all the fallen musicians oh, over the locally? years. So, yeah, cool. all local musicians. We had quite a few in the last two years. That yes, I'm unfortunately. And unfortunately, it still happens in threes. Yeah. You know, that's what's so sad about it. But, yeah, they do. They put it up in the video, um, you know, their name and, you awesome. know, their, their dates. But. So, and if you want to add anybody to it, you can just reach out to anybody in the band, and they'll they'll add them up there. So, you know, but unfortunately, the way I look at it, Heaven's got one hell of a jam session going on up there. You know, yeah. so hell of a jam session. So, um, Tim, are you still there? Yep. Awesome. What are you doing? Are you eating food? Are you having snacks? What are you doing? Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the doggy. <laughs> Everybody's keeping an eye on you. You know how that works. Yeah. The dogs own the house. They own everything. They're the boss. That's we have right. two of the opposite ends. Seven pounds of badass, and he thinks he's bigger than everything. And he's about your size. How oh, funny. <laughs> he's got he's got, jokes. he's got thorns. <laughs> he looks like a Brillo pad. He's got his his hair is just a mess. I got cats. You got cats. For the first time ever. I never. Thought myself to be a cat person. It was always dog versus cat. Right. Totally fall in love with cats. I'm like, okay. For cat attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I used to. Um, I mean, over the years, I always got a kitten and a puppy at the same time and, and put them together. Oh, that's so fun. Then they're not ever scared of the other side, you know. <laughs> and then we have Taylor, Mr. Taylor Martin. He's a oh, he is a force within himself, isn't he? He's his own man, <laughs> as Grant would say. <laughs> yeah, he's something else. He's a cool dog. Uh, what about you, cat or dog, or fish, or gerbil? Uh, any animals are okay. I like them. I don't own any because it always will interrupt my, you know, if I want to go on vacation or anything. Right, because they end up owning you. It's yeah. very true. You know, yeah. these dogs don't clean their room. Fish, though, John Boy. Yeah. <laughs> These dogs don't clean their room. They that whole I don't have thumbs thing, you know. Get your own food. You know where it's at. I'm telling you. But golly, <laughs> you know, but what are we gonna do about them? Yeah. What are we gonna do without them? You know. So everybody always has their pets. Tim, what kind of dog do you have? It's an Amer American Eskimo. Oh, very nice. Both both blue eyes or one blue eye. Neither eye is blue. He, really? he has uh, golden eyes, and they look right through you. They're like mm -hmm. like a fox looking at you. Oh, cool! That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, you make sure and feed him on time then, if he's looking right through you. It could be yeah. scary. <laughs> Take an arm or leg off. Uh, um, are we gonna try any other music or? Um, yeah, we can. Um, so, what do you guys are you guys playing during the holidays? You guys got any holiday shows or anything we coming up? We just booked one for New Year's. Actually, we're excited about oh, that. Oh, where'd it's you get? Going to be at the Eagles Club in Festus Crystal City. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's gonna be a good gig. They promised us a huge um, disco ball. and said it'll light up the whole room. If so. if I'm not mistaken, I believe I've been there. It is a big hall. It's nice. It's got two bars. There's the smoking side, non-smoking side, mm -hmm. which accommodates, um, yes. and a hot food bar as well. Which if I'm thinking correctly, they used to do uh, chicken and, what was it, something, a chicken and beer dance or something? Chicken and beer dance. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, they had all their, their people, their moms and dads or whomever, I mean, they had fryers nice. set up. and Oh, it was the best chicken in the world. <laughs> and then you got to buy pictures of beer to, you know, wash it down. But, yeah, chicken and beer dance. They, they have quite a few of those, but, yeah, they're fun. But, yeah, it's, it's a pretty big venue. And they will pack it in. People stay. They'll stay. So it's great. That is awesome. That is awesome. So tell us about your other your other two members. Your other band members. Our, so we got Jim on the phone. Then we've got Marky Mark on bass. He's a badass bassist. Um, and then we got Daryl who shreds that lead guitar. He's just mm -hmm. like 
John was saying earlier, you can pick up a song and learn it like that. Mm -hmm. And he's got great vocals, and he's just got that passion. You know, I look at back at the pictures, and he's all got his eyes closed, his head back. I'm like, that's <laughs> what it's talking about. <laughs> and then Scotty Boyd just banging out them drums, and just all very talented. You know, that's cool. That's yeah. awesome. So y'all live here, or you're in, you're in Illinois, or you I'm spread out Illinois, all over? I'm in Illinois, so is Jim, and the rest are in Missouri. Mm -hmm. I'm Arnold, Missouri. Arnold. 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 There's quite a few bars down there. Have you hit those? I'm working it. I wanted to hit up Kenny's, actually, but I hear they're possibly going another. I don't know if that's true. Maybe I should say that in the air. But oh, don't get me started. Yeah. I mean, it's every other day. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I think the owner... I think the them. owner... I think Kenny's getting tired. Okay. But I mean, he, he does a lot of business with his uh, the pool the pool leagues and yeah, they get a lot of talent out there. So oh yeah, I have to be a part of that. Yeah. yeah, they and they they take care of their bands. Um, mm -hmm. Jason, I think he's back out there as their sound guy. He was also a DJ and he was doing the booking the and then he out, yeah. yeah he left for a while and then he came back. But um, that's a cool venue. The, I agree. It's, even though the stage is up high, it's not a bad load in because it's the stage is this tall if you're standing next to it. So you can just set your things right there and then climb up and move everything around. You don't have to climb up the stairs with all your gear and then, you know, the set it up. Yeah. So it, it's kind of, it's not it's as big. intimidating as it looks. Yeah. But when you're up there on the stage, the sound is pretty good. It's always good, right? Well, I mean, any, there's a sweet spot all over the room. If any owners are listening to this 10 times 0 podcast, we are booking for next year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Jim, do you got a phone number you want to give out? Because I don't know if you want it to go to you or Scott. No, give, uh, give Scott's number. Do you have it? It's not BR549, is it? See, nobody knows that joke, Richard. <laughs> I'm so flippin' old. Oh, let's see. Uh, you don't have Scott's phone number? Yeah, we got it. Oh, they can just go to your page, right? 314 239 2101. 314 239 2101. Just talk, talk to uh, Scott and Janice. And, and, and the big deal is get, get to our website, www.10times0.com. All spelled out. Yeah, because we've got samples there, and um, I think that they'll appreciate the variety. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everybody loves free swag. Free Don't swag. forget that. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, the cheapest thing you can you can you can get for your band that you, you want to throw it out is guitar picks with your name on it. Idea. You can go to like any of those any website, and you can get like a thousand picks for like practically nothing. Get whatever you want engraved on it. What else you see thrown out there? Thrown out there. Um, key rings, uh, koozies. Koozies, good idea. Um, T-shirts, -shirt. sell the T-shirts. You don't want to yeah. give those away. Um, uh, hats. What else? Pen Maybe some pens. Uh, every little thing has pens. Okay. I hope it's got pens. Stickers. And stickers are cool. Yeah. Yep. For sure. But yeah, there's... Um, Back in the day, there used to be matchbooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on the inside, you wrote phone numbers in there. Isn't that right, baby? <laughs> right. Is that how you want to over? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was not. I couldn't get near that crowd. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh huh? So how long have you been playing since you were a kid? Well, singing is just been in choirs or in church uh, college but nothing really that you would brag about until seven or eight years ago um, of course I've done karaoke but that doesn't count you know where I met John about ten years ago when he was first in a band and we went on a date and he doesn't remember it from <laughs> so sorry. I, I wouldn't even share that. You know what? Really I don't know what's date. worse, you you saying it or you admitting it? <laughs> really, you guys? Seriously? Well, I'm sure oh, he said that. I guess it's been about ten years. Oh yeah. my I'm god! Sure. Obviously, something went wrong you. somewhere. I'll just one? rub it in forever. <laughs> <laughs> I am ordained. Whenever you want to get married, I know you won't remember it, but you know. <laughs> You know what we should do on one of our gigs in the future? 
during one of the songs I should propose to you, and then you should say no just to do a prank just on make ourselves. Make it really awkward, right? Yeah. right? And then everybody's like, "What? What just happened?" And you're gonna say, "I don't remember." Do me and like one me. <laughs> <laughs> don't remember. That's hilarious. Where did you go? I don't. I don't remember. You don't remember. Okay. I lived in West Plains, like four years or four hours away, and uh-huh. we talked online. And I just remember him being a musician. And again, I was very shy back then. I just had that inner dream of doing being a singer. And so that really allured me to him. And I came up. And I just remember being somewhere in St. Louis. He had a really nice car, and he would, him singing. And I'd just be like astonished with the high notes he could hit. It was good things. It was good things there, John. He's turning bright red. It's a lot to embarrass me. <laughs> so, what was your influence to um, sing? I mean, who was your first influence as far as and and the uh, genre you wanted to sing? Or do you have one particular, or are you just like all of them? I've always loved the classic arena rock bands, mm-hmm. um, and then. You know, everybody likes Freddie Mercury. Mm-hmm. So Who doesn't I, love that guy. It's yeah. it's uh, I do really good. I think imitation imitating Sticks and Ario. And I try one of the things I try to do with with whatever song we're doing is try to make it as authentic as the cover we're doing. I've been told by people with musical experience that's the wrong way to go. Use your own voice, but. Didn't I say I, that earlier? Yes. I put your spin on it. I keep hearing the original in my mind, and right. I want to match it because I think that brings that the, the power. Take that You've got the ear, so what you do is you just hold it there for a yeah. second, and like, oh, I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. I'm going to put some pepper on you're it this right. way because you're not a tribute band. Right. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, That's it's because right. it, people will hear more mistakes when you try to yes. do yeah. that and, and, and focus on that versus just winging it and just let them have it yeah like 10 years ago i could do journey and now when i try to do it i can get most of it but if you miss one journey note everybody's paying attention to that oh, <laughs> journey fans are die hard man i mean they are they'll, they'll turn on you yeah. <laughs> you did it wrong so, you know the, the groups from the late 70s early 80s is my favorite but um i'll some of the songs that that 10 times zero presented to me i was like I don't even remember this one. And then some of them I wasn't able to pull off, but others I actually grew into. Mm-hmm. So okay. thanks to their patience with me, I, you know, because y- when you're in a band, you're you're not just trying to do what everybody else does. You're trying to learn and grow on your own too. Right. And you need people to to understand when that because it's a process. Um, right. And then now she's here to take some of that heat off of me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, she's taking a lot of heat off. <laughs> that's good. All right, so Princess, what was who was your first influence? You said, oh, I'm going to sing like that person. Say, um, first time you I heard so something, ah, oh, that's what I want to do. Janis Joplin. Come I love on. some Janis. I love oh, yeah. Alanis Morissette. I love Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and Prince mm-hmm. and... Queen and all that. It's it's about the art behind it and the passion and right. the uniqueness. So the more unique it is, the more it seems to be drawn to it. So. Definitely. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. But um, what about you, Jim? My influence is Frank Zappa. Yes! Really? Joe's and, uh, Garage! <laughs> oh, my favorite all-time song ever. And, uh, and you, do you know that song? He, You've got to turn, came out. turn her on. Turn these Please. guys on to Joe's Please garage. So what this is about? Frank Zappa wrote this killer song, and if you if you know any about Frank Zappa and his history, he's just awesome. He wrote this song about every garage band that started out. Oh, me and my two buddies, and we knew one song, and the girls are dancing, and it's like it's so it's so 1970s. It's so yeah. I mean, if if you grew up in that era, everybody had a garage band. And you played in the garage, no matter how good or bad you were. Mm-hmm. But you had that one song, and you had the neighborhood. Group. You that totally humbles you if you're like, <gasps> you know, listen to Joe's Garage. It takes you back to the very first one. What they knew one song, right? They just kept playing it over and over again. <laughs> they <get> their first <laughs> gig. It's you gotta hear it. It's great. Zappa's a great storyteller. He's mm-hmm. he's just Better. yes, it's awesome. You gotta hear it. Check it out. And then I kind I kind of moved into. Uh, I, 
Zappa started out actually doing kind of 60s um, and maybe even even 50s music. He was doing doo-wop yep. some tunes on us when he was when he started. Mm-hmm. But then he he um, as everybody knows, I mean he he progressed into kind of into jazz and and really into just a, a psychosis of music. But uh, the Hot Rats album was uh, really a quintessential Badass. moment for me. Badass. Mm-hmm. He's so he's he's experimental, but he he hears something and everything, and puts some some wonderful piece together, and it's like, oh wow! I mean, you could hear, you could taste it. It's just like you just he's so obscure and just so unique. You know, he named his kids, you know, Dweezil is his son, and his daughter's name is Moon, Moon Unit. Unit. Okay. <laughs> and they, she did a silly song in the 80s. It was Valley Girl. I, I have the 45, and I'll never, it yep. was hilarious. I mean, it was a parody of, you know, the girls who live in the valley in California. But sure. Still, it was just, he was all about parody and not taking life too serious, but he was really good. They're all good musicians, you know. That's why I like Weird Al. <laughs> That's the sound. Weirdo Yankovic, he's mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah. Some of his stuff is pretty funny. But, but so Frank then Zappa, another another. I'm gonna I'm gonna go one more. Emerson Lake and Palmer. Emerson Lake and Palmer works is the best one. I used to have that. I had that white satin jacket. Oh man, what a killer! Yeah. You can just talk about music forever all day you? long. <laughs> I can bore you to death. <laughs> <laughs> no, Emerson Lake and Palmer right works was my favorite. What was yours? My favorite song? No, album. Oh, album. It was albums, remember? Everybody bought albums. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go down the basement and look for it. Yeah. Is it in your peaches crate? Because I still have mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um, but I just... Um, ELO, and then, and then when Yes hit... Oh, yes. That I mean, you just uh, your mouth dropped. You know, Roundabout was just such a. uh, I mean, that was just a moment in time for me. Yeah. Uh, And 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 that that really really solidified my desire to um, be a part of music and be a part of very creative music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Their voices and their talent was just oh, you can't touch it. You just can't. I know. Yeah, I think John Anderson recently released a new single, uh, a new album, I guess. Uh, just sounds like Yes, too, so it's worth checking out. My aha moment was, um, so, and, and I, I stand by this comment. I know I've, I've heard all kinds of backlash from it, but this band came out in 19, the late 70s. And not a lot of people in the United States heard of them because they're from Canada. This killer three-piece band. And I heard their songs, and I lost my mind. Now, when I was still, I was still in high school, so every day, we, my friends, we'd all collect in the library and compare music and all. Okay, what's the newest? What's the newest? Rush. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I lost my mind. I mean, I was How like, oh, my God. Three people make that sound. Uh, and his drums were, uh, they were like, they were octagon shape. And I remember I was so excited. I'm telling my friends, and usually they, like, listen to me. They suck. They're never going anywhere. I was like, you're out of your mind. I mean, the best line of any song, and the meek shall inherit the earth. I have it tattooed on my arm. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean that's a that's a very prolific statement. But think course. about it, you know. Absolutely. So it's just like they just their music is just insane. I mean, it's um, it, what do they say? They were panned first by the by the critics because it was too long or it was too uh, I don't know. They said it was uh, nerdy or I don't know. But it was just like nobody makes sounds like that. Nobody a little beyond their time. Nobody makes sounds like that. Those awesome. three guys are just amazing. You know, Here, here's some some unique. trivia. There, there was a local band called Rush as well. There they was. were a motor, motorcycle, um, I guess, based. I, I, I associated them with mo- motorcycle people, but because uh, wherever they played, a whole bunch of motorcycles showed up. Yeah. Motorcycle people. <laughs> 
Yeah, there was. And I, do you remember that? I do remember that now. Do you remember that local band? I do. When you say that, because it was like, wait, yeah. wait that's not the same one. Um, oh, they, they showed up everywhere for, for a couple of summers. They were they, they were just about everywhere in St. Louis. Yeah, I can't remember. That's funny. I, I think it was all free things, so I don't think they ever, I don't think they played in clubs at all. They just did, like, outdoor mm-hmm. pop-up concerts. Right. Which are fun. There and what like, happened to what happened to outdoor pop up concerts? By the way, um, I'm not sure when it was shut down, but I mean there was always the KC Kite Flies and the the concerts mm-hmm. in Forest Park and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean it was. Yes, uh, you had some. Mm-hmm. Everybody had them, and then they just stopped doing them. And it was way before COVID. I think it was about crowd control and just all the other stuff they had to deal with. So the little history on KC. Um, Ron Stevens is uh, uh, the videos I do every week. He was he's my producer on those, and um, we did a documentary on Casey. It's called Never Say Goodbye. I played the song, and we made it ninety four point seven minutes long because that's the okay. anyway. And we had all this. It's it's the history of Casey where it started. So which was yeah. cool. So there's not ever going to be a sequel because it's done. I mean you know. Not every jock is in it because not every jock was there from the beginning. And um, there's one thing we got at the last minute. It took us two years to put this together. And some guy, get this shit. Oh, I get chills when I think about it. This guy came out of nowhere and he said, I have some footage from one of the Forest Park concerts. Now, back in the day, uh, when they did concerts like a Keel or was Keel and uh, what was the other one? Keel and um, uh, the arena. Uh, yeah, but what's it called? It wasn't Opera Keel, House. Keel, it was Keel Opera House, and then there was another one too. Well, Keel, Keel Auditorium. Yeah, Keel Auditorium. I guess it was the only one. But um, there was a curfew, so and it was a union house. And whenever we had bands set up in there, all concerts had to be done by eleven o'clock, or they're going to pay time and half. Well, okay, she had no money. I mean, they were in a little cinder block office in Crestwood, <laughs> and so. Janice Joplin and her band, Big Brother and the Holding Company, were supposed to play. And so, but uh, Keel says, you guys are done at 11 o'clock. So she gets up there on the stage and says, we're doing a free concert at Forest Park tomorrow if anybody wants to come. The place was slamming. And some guy got video of that. Freaking Janice Joplin! Wow. I, was like, oh. I mean, every time I watch it, I'm going, oh, jeez. I mean, she's just, oh, I just love her to death. But yeah, Big Brother and the Holding Company. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Free awesome. concert and flipping Forest Park. And Janice. Janice. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I always wanted to meet her. She's like, yeah, but it's just, uh, I mean, there's just so much great history with, with our music. I don't know why they stopped. Who are your inspirations? Started with Janice, actually. She was one of the first females I heard. Um, um, and it was just like, there was something about it. It was something about her voice, something about her, Please. her just everything about her. It was just, and my daddy always said, well, <coughs> You were four when Woodstock was going on. I'd let you go because you are—you have an old soul, you know. Because I'm an old hippie, yeah. but still, it was just like, uh, but it was just something about it, you know. Yeah. She just had that. Ugh, I would know. think I would think Grace Slick would have been a um, well, Grace, a role model. Grace Slick, she didn't come till later. I mean, as far as I was concerned, True. when I listened to her, because you know, it was it was uh, Jefferson Airplane, and they turned into a starship, mm-hmm. you know, to. Right. Roll with the times. And now Grace is like, I don't know what year it was, uh, what, 10, 15 years ago, she got out of music and mother effing everybody on, you know, anything to do with music and the whole industry. She just completely said, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was really sad that it, I don't know what happened. I think Mickey Thomas is still doing concerts. Oh, really? From the, the male vocalist from mm-hmm. Jefferson. That's awesome. That'd be great. But yeah, she just completely said, "I'm done with it." I don't know what made her mad or pissed her off, but you, it's it's all over um, the internet. But it was a that was a sad day, you know, when somebody that great is just said, "I'm done." Yeah. yeah it's a music Literally. period, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost as bad when they went through. <clears throat> some friends of mine in high school went through that whole record burning thing. Oh, play it backwards. You hear the devil. <laughs> It's all marketing. Settle down, yeah. you know. Yeah. He's, he's not going to eat oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it was just marketing. Yeah. Really. You know, you see an, a, a group called Blue Oyster Cult, and they they have all the trappings of the satanic stuff, and then you listen to the 
music and you go it's all ballads right for- exactly <laughs> exactly I mean, you know, everybody's got to have their shtick and their gimmick, and they want to stand out. So, yeah. so you know what? If it's something they, you know, you're, you're not going to, like I said, you're not going to please everybody. It's just everybody sees things differently. You know, it doesn't matter what it is. Right. So. It keeps life interesting in the end. It does, for sure. For sure. So what is, um, so you guys have, you are at the winery next Saturday, and then the following Friday you're at Parrots. Mm-hmm. And then what? And then what? Look at the calendar. Look at the calendar. I know we are going to the Music House, October Music 18. House. Yeah, I guess that would be the third one, right? Well, and then way out in Marthasville at a place called Skeeter's on October 26th. Uh, that's going to be a Halloween-themed night in case anybody wants to get out of the drive out to Marthasville <laughs> well it, it's yeah. not that we uh, we took off on our bikes we're motorcycle people by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> we got on our bikes to go to bike fest and um, I still say we had bad we got bad gas but you know it, it just anyway so they started acting up and we turned around in Marthasville and brought our bikes back got in the truck and still went to the Ozarks because we had babysitters for the dogs and we needed the days off <laughs> yes, yes. No, but still, it's um, Marthasville is a nice little town. Have you done Corey's Twin Gables yet? Uh-uh. That's in Marthasville. That's a pretty okay. cool venue. Okay. Corey's Twin Gables. Corey's so when you're Gables. down there, if you go down there earlier, jump over to the... No, listen, go over there and grab the manager and say, hey, we're playing over here. Okay. Come and listen to us. Is that close to each other? Um, well, Marthasville is not that big of a town. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, you know, you could probably throw a rock. Okay. You know, so... But it's... Um, they're both really cool venues. Sounds good. You know, they don't have anything else to do down there. <laughs> Come over. Yeah. I'll buy you a drink, you know. <laughs> give him a guitar pick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how old he is. Maybe you can give him a matchbook. <laughs> <laughs> or a pen. Or a pen. Right. All right. Exactly. For sure. What time is it? It is 9.02. Episode 155, STL Roar, 10 times zero. Thank you guys so much for, for being here. Us. Oh, you guys are awesome, for sure. You're amazing, too. Um, and so you are at the quarry on Saturday. 7 to 10. Parrots yep. on Friday. Yep. The, f- mm-hmm. next, the following Friday. Friday. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, and you're at Skeeters. Skeeters, yeah. Yes. Down in Marthasville. Got it. And also the Music House on October 18th. Cool. Okay. Well, good. Saint, that's St. Charles. Yes, that's a fun venue. Yeah, they got a nice stage. They, they got an easy load in too, for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, definitely. Have you not played there yet? I don't think so. Yeah, I have. Oh, you have. He's played everywhere. Yeah. Don't let him fool you. But he can't remember your date. Really? You should have been carrying a guitar. I will do whatever I can to make that. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> uh, oh, you'll never forget me. Give me that's right. Chance. We're gonna. Put yeah, that's right. <laughs> to put something out there on Facebook. Yeah, yeah that's where we can, you can find all of our events coming up. Because um, Jim is extra uh, good at putting the promotion out there. And, uh, he's talking yeah, about ten, oh, ten times zero dot com forward slash upcoming, and you'll get our page to see what the next events are. Awesome, for sure. So, what kind of incentive do you want to give out to any of your fans or anybody? You know, the next time they come see you, or you gotta buy them a shot. You gotta buy the whole bar a shot. (laughs) (laughs) You bring in shots. (laughs) (laughs) Give Uh, it a shot. uh, uh. (laughs) Well, maybe some just some fun uh, throwouts, like you were suggesting. Yeah, that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. Super. You don't have to spend a whole bunch of money, but people love. And they'll Stop, they'll carry right? them around like stickers. Yeah, I mean my phone my phone case I had them the back it was jammed of them but yeah they'll they'll take that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, you know about this mm-hmm. big don't get the big ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean it's easy stuff. Something that'll be in, in their face or magnets. Yeah. Refrigerator. And if anyone's having a birthday, bring your party to see us and we'll make everybody feel special. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You'll bring they'll, you'll bring the cake, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cake and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right, you guys, we are out of here. Thank you, Jim, for hanging on the phone with us all night. 
And thank you uh, very much. We will see you next time. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much. And one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Easiest audience. You don't have to feed them or drink them. You know, they just like to hear good stuff. Not you, yeah. Uh, Yes.